First Samuel chapter number 3. And we'll begin reading here in verse 1. First Samuel chapter number 3 and verse 1. The Bible says here, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep, that the Lord called Samuel and he answered, Here am I. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I, for thou callest me. He said, I called not, lie down again. And he went and lay down. And the Lord called yet again Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Now nothing said here, but it took Eli three times. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood and called, as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. Let's pray together. Lord, we are thankful for your goodness to us, and we are thankful for the Bible. Uh, we think about that phrase here, Lord, where the Bible says the word of, uh, that the Word of God was precious. The Word of the Lord is precious in those days. How precious our Bible is to us. And uh, we have it readily available uh, and uh, uh, open to use, to read, to hear from you. How thankful we are for that, Lord. I pray tonight that you'll help us now as we look into your word, challenge us. Lord, grow us. May you find in us, Lord, a heart with a readiness to receive your word. And then, Lord, uh, to be careful about how we hear you. Be careful in our listening for you. God, that we might, you might find in us a heart of obedience as was with Samuel. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Help us, Lord, tonight along those lines we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. I, I, uh, I love stories like this. It's, I, I love when God is talking to people. Amen. Don't you? I mean, all through the Old Testament, right into the New Testament, you see it? God, God appeared to Paul on the road to Damascus. Did I turn this on? I did. God, God spoke to Paul, you know, uh, Saul at the time. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? I love when God engages people, don't you? I mean, that's a blessing when the God of heaven begins to move and he begins to stir hearts. And, uh, and uh, uh, th that's the way our, 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 our walk with God should be. Look here. Christianity is not merely a set of religious rules and duties we follow and carry out. Christianity is meant to be a living, vibrant relationship with an almighty God. And uh, this is something that Samuel had to learn. Look at verse 1 of chapter 3. The child Samuel ministered unto the Lord. Samuel was serving the Lord. The Bible says that he didn't yet know the Lord uh, and that the word of the Lord had not been revealed unto him. I think there's a lot of servants of the Lord that way, to be honest with you. They're going through the motions of the religion, but the relationship is kind of not maybe as what it should be. Uh, we, we could say that about any, uh, about any number of places. Uh, but um, uh, but even, among, uh, even among fundamental Bible-believing Christians, if we're not careful, I mean, it just becomes going through the list. There's no, there, there can be a waning sensitivity to the work of the Spirit. I think we see that to some degree with Eli. I mean, Eli it took him three times to realize what was going on from the Lord to tell Samuel what to do. And so uh, we need to be careful uh, to, to realize that we can serve the Lord, but not necessarily be walking with the Lord. 
Walking with the Lord demands a fulfilling two-way communication. In other words, God, us talking to God and God talking to us. And so we find a picture of that quickly if you would look at the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John. And uh, uh, we see what the Lord had to say about this relationship with His servants the way He desired it to be. In, in, in John chapter number 14 uh, and uh, down here in, uh, in verse 12. John 14 and 12. Now, if you have a red letter Bible, this is in the red letter section of your Bible. John 14, 12. Verily, verily, he said, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, watch now, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. God never intended for us to sit on our leaves. Jesus said, you're not only going to do what I did, you're going to do greater things than I did. In other words, he wants that, that forward progress, not just in our relationship, but in our work. And he said, greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. He said, I'm, you're going to do greater things because I'm going away. Now, what do you mean by that? That was the promise of the Holy Spirit. See, where Jesus was in one place working at one time, we've talked to you about this before, uh, once Jesus left, uh, then the Holy Spirit came, and now the power of God's working in every believer everywhere. And so a greater work, if you will, is being done. And he said here, uh, uh, verse 13, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. In other words, we ask, he does. That's what he intended. That's God moving on our behalf. Amen. And so he said, Whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, I'll do, the Father may, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Uh, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, then keep my commandments. Now watch. He goes from us asking and him doing to him asking and us doing. That's what you see there. Uh, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you, verse 16, another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. That's the Holy Ghost of God in the heart of every believer in Jesus Christ. It's not a matter of is he there, he is there. And so uh, we're talking here about a sensitivity uh, to his leadership. And so he says, uh, uh, he says in verse number uh, 18, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Let a, uh, yet a little while the world seeth me no more, but ye see me because I live, ye shall live also. And then he goes down here to verse 21. He says, uh, well, let's look at verse 20. Uh, at that day ye shall know that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, look here, and will manifest myself to him. That's God revealing his person, his plans, his power in our heart and our life. That's what the Lord intended for our walk with him to be. And so, uh, Judas saith unto him, not a scarlet, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? Now, he was just as confused as you and I get sometimes. Verse 23, And Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. And so the point of all this is, here he's talking about his servants that love him and are keeping his commandments, and he's talking about two-way communion and communication with a living, risen Savior. That's the way God intended for it to be. That moment-by-moment -moment walk with the Lord. And so the Lord tells us that we should be asking him for what we need, and we should be hearing from him as to those needs. God still seeks to speak to us and to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with us. We know that God wants to speak. And by the way, if it's not that way, then what we do is just religion. And it's going to be a long road to heaven, brother, if that's all we have is to go through the motions of it all. 
We know that God wants to speak to us, and He's trying to speak to us, but the question we have to ask ourselves is, are we listening? Now, I'm glad Samuel, for all of his inexperience, was listening. I'd rather make a mistake on the listening side than on the deep side. Amen. Samuel was one of the mightiest, pro mightiest prophets of the Old Testament, but he could not have become a mighty prophet if he had not learned to listen to God. And in our text, Samuel responded to the Lord. There in 1 Samuel chapter number 3, he responded to the Lord, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. And that word heareth has the idea of I hear with the intent to obey. It didn't mean, yeah, I hear what you're saying, I'll get with you later. That's not it. it I'm gonna tell, God, if you tell me something, I'm going to do it. If you tell me something, I'm going to do it. Now, of course, that means we need to hear him tell us something, right? Eli taught Samuel how to listen to God. And if you and I are going to be men and women of God, we've got to learn to hear what God is trying to say to us. God is not dead. It's sad sometimes that we should even have to be reminded of it, but he's not dead. He's alive. He's trying to say something. He's trying to do something in you and in me right now tonight. But we have to have, it. Jesus said, if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And that's where our problem is, isn't it? If any man have ears to hear. Now, what, what, what is an ear to hear? All right? And that'll answer our question for tonight. An ear to hear is one that listens expectantly. In other words, if we're going to listen to God, we've got to anticipate Him speaking to us. Now look, you, that might sound like the most simple statement, maybe, that you've heard in a while. But a lot of us miss it. We wake up in the morning, we read our Bible, we go through our prayer list, we go about our day, and we never expect that God might intervene. We never expect that God might respond. And then we get up the next day and go through the same thing. Much of our life, many times, if we're not careful, will be spent doubting that God wants to speak to us personally. And you'll have to fight this matter of falling into the rut of religion. You'll have to fight that with every aspect of your being, or that's what will end up happening to you. God is active. Amen. God never lazy. You and I might sit on the front porch and enjoy sweet tea, but God doesn't. Brother, he's doing something. He's trying to do something, right? And so we need to listen to him expectantly because God promises to speak to us. Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. He promises to answer and to speak and to guide and to direct. Matter of fact, that's his desire for life. Uh, but if we doubt uh, his willingness to do so, we have difficulty listening. And that's what it all comes back around to is faith. We say we believe God is speaking and guiding and leading. But then, you know, we've heard it said that many Christians live like practical atheists. And you know what that means, basically. The idea of that statement is that there are people that profess to know the Lord, but really they live like the devil. But honestly, I'm going to tell you this. Uh, we can do the things of the Lord and still not be listening. And that's the point. We can, we can, we can be a Christian and yet live like a practical atheist, like there is no God. And we can go through all the religious motions of it constantly. That's scary. That's scary. Uh, so uh, God promises to speak to us, and we need to have faith in His Word that He will and that He is. Now, uh, our expectancy of His voice speaking has to do with our belief in His reliability. If we don't believe God is reliable or we do not expect to hear from Him, we won't listen very long. It's like Pastor said this morning uh, about the dad that doesn't listen to the kids. The kids get to the point where they don't even talk to dad. Why? They don't think he's going to answer. And so you, you'll never be a success in your Christian life if that's, where you, if that's the uh, trap and the attitude that you fall into. You won't make it. Uh, we, we, we think about uh, uh, illustrations like Elijah when he was on the mountain with the, uh, with the prophets of Baal. And they said, hey, they, they, made a, they made an accord. They said, the God that answers by fire, he's God. 1 Kings 18. And so 
uh, you know, they, they got together and, and Elijah said, uh, by all means, after you. And so they started cutting themselves and ringing gongs. And uh, look here, just the way that they acted was an indication that they did not expect their God to do anything. And after a while, they wore themselves out and made a mess of the place. And Elijah said, all right, it's enough. And uh, he walked up there and began to pray. And uh, he prayed some very simple words. And fire came from heaven. And, you know, they rebuilt the altar. God consumed it all with fire. And uh, in, in response, look, Elijah walked up there with all the confidence in the world because he believed God would respond. Elijah had already seen uh, the Lord respond in prophecy and with the raising of the widow's son and supplying the widow's need. And so he expected God to answer because God had been faithful in his, Christian, uh, in his, in his, uh, in his walk with him all along the way. But some, some believers, listen, when God does something, they're shocked. That should never be the case with our, with our life, with our Christianity. I mean, brother, this thing's active. And so we need to listen expectantly. We're wasting our time if we don't expect God to answer. And you might, you might as well answer the question, you know, Elijah said, uh, how long basically halt you between two opinions that the Lord be God serve him? Well, if you don't believe God's going to answer, then you might as well just follow the prophets of Baal. You know what I'm saying? And so we need to, the, the, the ear to hear is an ear that expectantly waits for the voice of God. We're looking for it. Secondly, the ear to hear is one that waits quietly. In Psalm 46.10, the Bible says, be still and know that I am God. Now that be still basically means, yeah, you got to sit still before him. But it also has the idea of waiting quietly before him. Think about your prayer time. Too often... Uh, we read off a list of requests and we get up and walk off. We talked about that before. We never give God time to speak. We announce our needs and wander off somewhere else. But prayer time ought to be much more than just reporting a list of requests to God. It should be a time of waiting upon the Lord's answers and direction for us. Think about your lifestyle. 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse 11 says uh, that you study to be quiet. Far too many have lifestyles that are more chaotic than quiet. Quietness is essential to listening. If we're too busy to listen, we won't hear. If we spend night after night watching TV, we won't hear. We try to listen to God uh, and we find our minds jammed up with all this carnal interference. I think this is why we have trouble... Uh, in God, listen here, I think this is why we have trouble sometimes in God moving in our worship services because God's people have spent all week being entertained by the devil's kid and you're not just going to wash that out in 30 seconds before you get to church. And so there needs to be an, uh, 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 an attitude of meditation before God if we're going to hear him speak, waiting quietly before him. It takes time and quietness to prepare to listen to God. I mean, God says that we're to come boldly under the throne of grace, but He never said that we're to come sloppily or disrespectfully. Amen. I think we kind of see that uh, in, in 2 Kings chapter number 1, you know, where the king got bad news he was going to die, and so he went to chase down the man of God, and he, sent, uh, and he sent three groups of 50. And the first two groups found a prophet up on the hill and said, Hey, the king wants you to come down right now. And uh, he said, Look here, if I be a man of God, then let fire come down and consume you and your 50. I mean, you just don't come here making demands of God. And so the second 50 came, and the same thing, burned up with fire from heaven. Now that third group got the point. And they came on their knees. Oh, please, look here. We know what God, we don't want that to happen. Could you please, and what God say, go with him. Go with him, it'll be all right. And so we're to come boldly to the throne of grace. Uh, but the Bible says in Psalm 62, 5, My soul, wait thou only upon God. Look here. For my expectation is from him. 
We've got to have space to get quiet and alone with the Lord. That's why we talked about recently where Jesus went up on the mountaintop and Paul got out alone and John the Baptist and the disciples and all of that. Places where the voice of God doesn't have quite so much competition with other things. It doesn't have to be on a mountaintop. It can be in your living room or in the kitchen table or wherever, in some place where you get quiet so you can hear what God's got to say. And so... It's, a, it's important. That's why it's important. Listen, that's why it's important to make our homes a, a, a heaven and not a hell. Our homes ought to be a place where God can speak. Amen. Amen. And so God's voice is a still small voice and it's so easily drowned out by a life of clamor. So the, the ear to hear is one that listens expectantly and then one that listens quietly and then it's one that listens patiently. God doesn't tell us some things instantaneously. Uh, uh, but if we, uh, uh, if, if, if we wait before Him, we up and run off before He's got a time, uh, time to say anything or before He's ready to say anything. Sometimes we're not ready for the answer. Paul told the Corinthians, he said, And brethren, I could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, uh, even as unto babes in Christ. In other words, there are some things I'd like to say to you, but I can't because you're not in a spiritual place to hear it. You know, I've got to be very careful. The lack of answer to our prayer may very well have to do with us. Amen. Sometimes our not being ready is not our fault. God's work and things, sometimes our not being ready is our fault. For the Corinthians, it was carnality. James said in James 4 and 2, Yet you have not because you ask not. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust, ye adulterers and adulteresses. Know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God? And so, uh, Jesus, uh, it was Jesus that said, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine. So we cannot, we cannot expect God to speak to us that which is holy, only to have His words ignored and drowned out by our fleshly desires or lifestyles. Sometimes the circumstances uh, uh, themselves are not ready for an answer. See, the disciples had to wait for the coming of the Holy Spirit before they could be effective in preaching the gospel. Tear you, tear, that's why the Lord said, tear ye at Jerusalem uh, till, you, uh, till you be endued with power from on high. Uh, but we've got to be willing to listen to God patiently. And that can take some time. Uh, uh, and uh, thinking about that, we need to remember it's not because it's forgotten, but because God is still working circumstances or some things uh, in order to prepare us for His Word. Amen. And so we need to listen expectantly, uh, and we need to listen quietly, and we need to listen patiently, but we also need to listen actively. We've got to be active listeners, listeners not passive listeners of God. So much of our lives, if we're not careful, will go by without us ever asking the question, I wonder if God was trying to say something to me in that, or through that, or by that, or in that individual, or something. Uh, we've got to wait actively and listen to God before we, uh, to, uh, uh, before we get in a rush with God. We got, we've got to uh, be... Uh, Engaged is what I'm looking for. Paying attention. Walk circumspectly, the Bible says. Somebody that's listened to God uh, uh, to, uh, actively is one that looks for God to speak through His Word. You don't just read the Bible and think, man, this is a, you know, I'm going to get through my checklist and get done with it. No, you're reading your Bible because you need something from God. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. You remember Jesus was tempted by the devil, and when he was tempted by the devil, he quoted Scripture three times. Scripture was in his heart. So God's Holy Spirit could bring it to the point where it was needed, 
and use it in his life. You and I are the same way. Ignorance of the Word of God hinders our hearing. Uh, the Bible talks about how that the Holy Spirit of God will guide us into all truth. And he said, sanctify them through thy, through thy truth. Thy Word is truth. And so it stands to reason that God's Holy Spirit is going to use God's Word to respond to our petitions for direction, for instruction, for correction, all of that. His Word. We've got to be in the book, man. Uh, and uh, so we'll know how to order our lives. God speaks through His Word. And then so we need to actively look for God in His Word. But listen, we need to actively look for God to speak in every situation. To listen actively is to listen attentively. Uh, listening to God requires our full attention. Uh, we must pay attention to His Word, to His Spirit, to people, to circumstances. God's using it all. The Bible says in Proverbs 22, 3, A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Now what does that mean? That means they're going along the way, and a warning flag is put up, and they don't pay attention to the warning flag. And so what happens? They fall into trouble. Why? They're not paying attention. They're just going on about their life, not, not being sensitive, not actively looking for God to guide and direct and to protect. And the next thing you know, they're in trouble. Have you heard the story about uh, the folks that died in the terrible flood and, uh, and, uh, uh, and the waters are coming up and coming up and a boat comes by, you know, to pick them up? And they tell the guy, they tell the boat driver, no, nah, we're going to trust the Lord. We're just praying and trusting the Lord. So the boat goes on. And then they got to go up to the second floor. And while they're on the second floor looking out the window, here comes another boat. Boat says, you want me to pick you up? They said, no, nah, we're just going to trust the Lord. And off the boat went. Uh, and then the water comes up and now they're up on the roof. And they're praying, oh, God delivers. And here comes a helicopter and the helicopter's waving at me. wants to pick you up? And they said, no, we're just going to trust the Lord. Well, they drown. And they got to heaven. Lord, why didn't you save us? And here's what God said. I sent two boats and a helicopter and you ignored all three. You get my point? A lot of Christians are ignoring, ignoring the boats and the helicopters. Huh? And then when trouble comes, they're going to wish, hey, I wish I'd paid attention. Uh, and so we need to be actively listening, listening to God uh, in every situation, in His Word, in His, in, in His Spirit, through other people and through circumstances, discerning the voice of God in the circumstances of everyday life. Whether it's pass, the, a passing word or whether it's an earth-shattering event, you cannot divide your life into secular and, uh, and, and spiritual. To the believer, everything is spiritual. Right. Our whole walk is spiritual. Jesus is either Lord of all or He's not Lord at all. Amen. And you better pay attention. Here, here's the thing. We've got to learn to actively and attentively listen for God's voice. Look for His fingerprint in everything. Here's why. Because our ability... To discern the voice of God affects others around us. It affects others around us. And so God begins to work and to agitate, uh, to, uh, uh, to get us to follow His way and to do the thing that He wants us to do. Now look. Again, I, I'm going to give you a personal illustration. I don't want you to get offended at it. But I'm just going to tell you. Church family, right? Six months ago, we started looking for a person for this staff job. We're still looking. I've talked to six or eight or ten people. I don't even know exactly how many. We put before this church somebody that we felt like was qualified experienced, and all that kind of thing. Do you know why? Because I know, because of what God is doing in my spirit, that long term, 
I am not the youth man or the music man for Maranatha Baptist Church. And you can say, well, now look here. Uh, 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 are you not wanting to look here? I'm not going to get into what I'm telling you is this. I know my gifts. I know my calling. I know the purpose that God has for me. And I know long term that that is not it. Okay? And for seven months, we've been, six, seven months, we've been looking for somebody. All right? Uh, and, and to be honest with you, it's been hard to find somebody after the, uh, after the manner of the first one we put before you. We need a music man here. If it's full time, we need a music man. We, we, need, a, we need a youth man. I'm no fool. And so if maybe you've been looking for a chance to criticize me, I'll do it for, me, for you. I know. I, and I've been open about this. I told our, our teen parents at a fellowship recently that I know we have that need. You're not hurting my feelings by praying, dear God, give us a youth man, because the one we got... <laughs> Are y'all with me? And, and, and look here. <laughs> wow. You say, now, what, well, if we find one, what are you going to do? Look here, I'm not afraid of God having no work for me. Again, because I'm telling you what God is doing in my spirit. I know I got a calling. I know I got a purpose. And if some point in the future the church thinks to themselves, well, we really don't have no use for you, I know God's got a place somewhere because of what He's doing in my heart. Y'all listening? Y'all tracking? You say you're being overly sensitive. I'd rather err on the side of listening than err on the side of being deaf to God. Why? Because my... Look here. At some point here, I'm just, can I just be honest with y'all? I'm going to be in y'all's way. Amen. Yeah. You get it? Yeah. It is more important for me to be in the will of God and this church to be in the will of God, right? Amen. Than any other thing. Amen. And if I ever come, well, hey, I'm, I'm just telling you right now, it's obvious that God's working in my spirit right now. Amen. I will not. Our, our family will refuse to get in the way of progress at Maranatha Baptist Church. You should listen to me right now. We're not going to do it. It'd be better for us to mosey on somewhere and get out of the way for God to do something than to be a hindrance to the work of God. I believe that with all my heart. And hey, look here. I, I don't know. Maybe it's because of how God used us as a missionary. I mean, we just took off with nothing. We brought nothing home. <laughs> but the main thing was to be in the center of God's will. It's just that, look here, if, if I become tone deaf to the work of the Holy Spirit, then I begin to hurt what God wants to, I don't want God working around me, I want God working through me. And if I ever come to the place where He's having to work around me, i got to get out the way. Amen. Because the work of God is the most important thing. Right, I believe that. I didn't tell him I was going to preach this tonight. But he's nodding. Because the work of the Spirit and the will of God is the most important thing at Maranatha Baptist Church. And I am going to do my dead level best to stay sensitive to that. And I'm telling you right now, God's already stirring. My spirit is agitated. I'm greatly burdened. And concerned that we have the right people in the right places so that God can have His way. Amen. Amen. That's what I'm talking about when I talk about actively listening. Watching what's going on. Paying attention to circumstances. Paying attention to leadership. Paying attention to what's going on in our hearts. How the Holy Spirit of God may move in our mind. Y'all get it? It's vital. Because here's, I believe this, I, I think I've shared this with you before. I still believe it. We are all expendable in the work of God. 
Every one of us. God can use you somewhere for a minute and then move you somewhere the next. Just ask Philip. You see? The main thing is you're doing the will of God. Following His leadership. And you got peace about what God's doing. There. So look, actively pay attention to what's going on. Because if we don't, we miss the will of God and then we're all jammed up and in trouble. Right. Amen. <laughs> And look here. Now that leads to my fifth point. I'll finish with this one because I'm already out of time. But the listening ear is one that listens confidently. Why? Because if you have a realization of your own weakness, expendability, God's greatness and His power and His glory, and you and I as instruments... Uh, of God in the work of the Lord. Have the attitude that God can use me here and then He can use me there. God is going to respond to that heart. Amen. God is going to guide. God is going to direct. See? But if we get to the place where we're not going to do as God leads, we're afraid of the leadership of the Lord, now, man, now, do we really want to resist the work of God? Do you not? Do we really? Good night, man. <laughs> you see that whiteboard they brought up here? And the little kids drawing all that stuff? The Patch Club kids know more about music than I do. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's right. Don't bother me none to say it. Y'all already knew it anyway. Amen. <laughs> you get my point? <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Maybe I'll just go back there, Pastor. You want to come? <laughs> Matthew 7, 11. If ye then being evil know how to give uh, uh, good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your... Look, stop. I, I didn't give that illustration to be about me. Please. I gave it for the simple fact that I know what God's purpose and calling and burden in my heart is and, and the direction He's taking. I know it. And so it's okay for me to say I'm not gifted in this area. It's okay for me to say I don't have that strength. I'm not afraid of that. Because I know God's got a place. You get it? Amen. Amen. Okay, y'all got it. Uh, besides, it's better to run yourself down than somebody else anyway. Matthew chapter number 7 and verse 11. If ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good gifts to them that ask Him? We can listen confidently to God. But here's the thing. If God already knows that we're shut off to how He's going to lead us, there won't be any instruction there. If our ears aren't attentive to Him, why is, it, what's, why is He going to say anything? He that hath ears to hear, let Him hear. Dear friends and neighbors, God is alive. God wants to work. God's doing something. Huh? I don't want to miss it. How about you? Let's stand together and bow our heads for prayer.